Hello everyone, hope you are all well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are gonna show you how to replace the connector, which connects via a ribbon cable to the power button and the eject button on an Xbox Series X. Now, sometimes when dismantling an Xbox Series X, you can, if you're not too careful, actually damage this little connector here which is an IPEX FPC connector. Um, there's a ribbon cable which goes into that, which I say connects all the way down uh, through the Xbox uh, to the power button and the eject button. Sometimes this little connector can get damaged. Um, so we are going to replace that uh, and show you how it's done. Now this board itself, this is the Southbridge board from an Xbox Series X. Uh, this is obviously the Southbridge chip on that side. Uh, and then obviously you've got the LAN ports and USB ports. And then up here, as I say, this is the little uh, connector that uh, we need to replace that the ribbon cable connects into. As you can see, this one is quite badly damaged uh, from someone who's ripped out the ribbon cable uh, without actually pushing the connector down, which is the correct way of uh, removing the cable from these connectors. When we get under the uh, microscope, you'll see that in a little bit uh, more detail. So uh, let's get under the microscope and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Right, so here we are under the microscope, uh, close up on the connector, which is just here. Now, as you can see, this one is uh, pretty badly damaged. I don't know how that happened, uh, but it's, uh, got sent in to us for us to take a look at. So what we're gonna do is remove this, uh, this broken damaged one and replace it with a new one. New one looks like that with all the legs intact, as you can see. So we will get that new one installed. So what we're gonna do is come in with some flux and then add some leaded solder to these pins uh, and obviously to the uh, the holding pads which are holding the connector on to the PCB itself. Now what we need to be careful of is this side here is this uh, other connector um, which is plastic so you know we can't really come in just with some uh, hot air to remove this uh, because obviously we risk melting this connector here and similar this one's got quite a bit of plastic in it as well um, you know one method is to come in from the reverse side with some hot air uh, over here and heat this side up which then in turn will eventually get enough heat through the board to remove this um, there are a few components there which i need to be careful of so I will probably try just adding some leaded solder first of all and see how we get on with that uh, before we try the hot air method. Um, hopefully, once we get enough leaded solder in there, we can actually remove this just by a soldering iron rather than hot air. Right, so let's give that a go. So we're gonna add some flux all the way along here. We're gonna come with some flux, as I say, to these pads as well and then come in with our leaded solder and soak the entire area with some nice leaded solder, like so. Making sure we get these little pads here as well. Obviously this port is damaged, so it doesn't really matter if we damage it anymore, as you can see, some of those uh, those legs are coming away already. I think actually we can probably get these uh, legs pretty much removed with the soldering iron. Yeah, there you go. Let's clean our soldering iron off. Let's come back in again to remove that one as well, like so. See the port is pretty much coming apart already and that's probably with the heat from the soldering iron but also uh, because of uh, it's damaged already. All right, let's just spin it around so we can get access to the pad outside. Again, we'll come in with a load of solder, being careful of that white connector. And we are going to Get a load of leaded solder in there. 
like so. Again, this side, let's add a load of leaded solder up here as well. Let's clean off our soldering iron. Now, what I'm gonna to attempt to do is just see if we've got any movement with the uh, soldering iron. So I'm gonna come in with the soldering iron, heat the area up again, and I'm just gently pushing on the connector to see if there's any movement this side. As you can see, the whole area is starting to warm up. Okay, so there's not that much movement that side. We're gonna spin it around again. Come in with our soldering iron again. So where the pads are, being careful not to put too much pressure on the actual pads. As you can see, the area there is starting to move quite a bit. Like so. That's what we do. Grab a pair of tweezers as well. Now, I'm not putting loads of pressure on the actual connector, but I'm going to come in the soldering iron, heat that area up and just see how much movement we've got. Just gently lifting that side up. Coming to this side as well. And we will gently lift that side up as well. Like so. Spin it around again, coming from this way. Excuse me if I block the camera view, but it's a bit of a weird angle. Oh, be careful with the white connector. Come in again, and then as you can see, the connector starts to come away. Just grab that, and then off it pops, like so. Right, so next thing is to clean up the whole area. So let's just spin it around and come in with our wick, clean up the area. And we'll come in with some isopropanol or IPA, give the area a good clean. Now, we'll give it a proper clean up later. But what we need to do now is put some fresh flux and some fresh leaded solder on these pads. So coming with our soldering iron. Simply add the solder to the pads. making sure there's no bridges. And then we come in with our replacement connector. Just drop it into place for now, just roughly. Now the thing to check is obviously the legs on the connector line up with the pads on the actual Southbridge board. Yeah, they are pretty lined up. So we are going to come in with another pair of tweezers and we are going to hold that into place. Just like that. Then we're going to come in with a bit of flux. Do one side at a time. Apply some heat to the side uh, grounding pads. That one first of all, and then we come in and do this one. Again, 
just double check all the pads are aligned and legs are aligned. Come on, soldering iron. Being careful of this front plastic piece and obviously the plastic of the uh, power connector for the fan. Come in, gently touch your solder like that to do it relatively quickly and just pushing down on the connector as well. So it makes a good solder joint. See, I've just clipped that uh, fan, so you do need to be careful. Let's just come in again to give that an extra bit of heat here. Like so. Making sure that's stable again. Being careful of the actual plastics on the connector. And then we can actually solder down all of the legs. So what we're gonna do, come in with some more flux along the back. Like so. Clean off our soldering iron. Again, we'll apply just a little bit of pressure to the rear of the connector. And then we're literally just gonna come in and just touch each leg as we go along. Not forgetting the two pads which hold the actual connector down. Come in with a little bit more solder for these side pads. Like so. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more solder to each leg just to double check that it is uh, definitely soldered. We'll come in and we'll check them in a minute as well. by doing the nudge test. Let's give the whole area a clean again with some IPA. Right, so then what we'll do is a quick nudge test. So grab yourself a pair of tweezers. Just get you in focus so you can see this. And then come along and what you wanna do is just check each pin to see if it moves. Hopefully they should all be solid. Um, so let's uh, get this cleaned up um, off camera. Right, so there you have it. Connector replaced, which connects the uh, power and eject button on the front of an Xbox Series X replaced. So relatively straightforward job to do. Um, it's just an alternative method from actually, you know, using a heat gun and heating the other side of the board. You can do it that way. Just, you know, you just need to be careful heating these boards up, especially when there's components directly on, on the opposite side to what the thing you're trying to replace. That's the broken one, completely mangled. So as you can see, let's just zoom you in a little bit. Nice uh, replaced connector. So you do need to be careful of this power connector for the fan. I did touch it, but it's actually no damage to the actual connector itself, which is good just to actually to the side. So you do need to be very careful of that. Um, but uh, there you go. That's how to replace the uh, IPEX connector for a Xbox Series. X. Right, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Really do appreciate your view. Please consider giving us a thumbs up. That really does help us out very much. Uh, please consider also subscribing to the channel as well. We're posting weekly videos now on how to fix uh, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S and the PlayStation 5, as well as the, uh, the previous generation consoles like the Xbox One X, the Xbox One S and the PlayStation 4s as well. So please consider subscribing. 
as I say, thanks very much uh, for watching. Really appreciate your view. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.